So just to be clear, I'm going to present just on the settlement agreement. And uh, I'll start by giving a background and summary of the settlement agreement, how we got to where we are today. And then I'll go through a review of, of the details of the settlement agreement and then talk very briefly about the next steps. Um, so, next slide. So, um, as, as you saw through the, uh, the slide presentation at the beginning, um, how did we get here? In 1850, the Robinson-Huron Treaty was signed and Chief Wabakakak signed for your First Nation. And of course he expected a much larger reserve in a different location than the actual reserve that got surveyed by uh, Mr. Dennis in 1851. And it was really due to a miscommunication over the leagues versus the miles uh, that arose because of a mistake in the translation that was made by Mr. Keating during the meetings about the intended reserves for the First Nation. And I think many of you may know this, this happened for a lot of Robinson Huron First Nations um, and there have been quite a few settlements already on the leagues and miles uh, claims for other First Nations. So for Whitefish River First Nation, you began the process of uh, commencing a specific claim um, in 2003. So a claim was filed, it was, this was done by a previous lawyer. And the claim was essentially that the land that you got for your reserve was much smaller than you negotiated for in the Robinson-Huron Treaty. And roughly speaking, what you received was about 34 miles, uh, square miles that is, versus the 135 square miles that Chief Wabakekek had intended. So the specific claims process is not particularly fast. Um, it took five years for Canada to accept the claim and enter negotiations. And then in 2013, there was an initial um, settlement agreement that was actually um, initialed. And it was only for part of the claim lands that are shown on that map. And at that time, in 2013, Canada had offered $52 million less negotiating loan costs as the, as the settlement. So um, this is a little bit out of order actually. What did the treaty uh, that was written up say? Uh, you already saw that flash across the screen, the original text for Chief Wabakakak three miles front near Shebuananing by five miles inland for himself and the band. And as I said earlier, the, uh, the treaty didn't reflect what was intended and so Canada ultimately accepted that in 2008 and said we'll negotiate with you. Um, so next slide please. So um, in 2013, as I said, Canada had, uh, or rather Canada and the First Nation had initialed a settlement agreement for a smaller portion of land. But the, um, the Chief and Council uh, said, you know, that's really not the full settlement of our claim. And in 2017, um, Chief Shining Turtle met with the uh, Regional Director General, Stephen Gagnon, and he said, can we reopen negotiations and get this whole claim settled rather than doing it in bits and pieces? And uh, the RDG at the time agreed. And so in 2018, negotiations began based upon the information that had already been uh, gathered since uh, 2008. And the settlement negotiations took place so last summer, really, and last fall. And it led to an offer being made by the First Nation and Canada and Canada had to accept it through a Treasury Board process and in 2019 the initial settlement agreement between Canada and the First Nation was actually initialed and that's the initial agreement is the one that you have in your packages and in order to get it done in order to get the whole settlement agreement done there's two uh, processes in ratification uh, well, sorry, one process and ratification for your First Nation. So the members have to say yes to the settlement agreement and the way the ballot question is framed, it's not just the settlement agreement but it's also the trust agreement because the Chief and Council decided that they wanted to have both of those things dealt with at the same time, both the settlement and what would happen with the settlement monies which are to go into a trust. So just a little bit about the claim lands then. It's those, that green area on the map there, it's also showing up in the settlement agreement. Um, it's 64,896 acres of land that should have formed part of your reserve when it was originally surveyed in 1851. 
So next slide. So what did Canada offer? Um, they offered $104,013,790 to the First Nation to fully settle your claim and also a little bit of money for the negotiation costs. You received um, negotiation loan funding uh, and over the years and you also they also put aside or gave you some money for your ratification costs so that will come out of the hundred and four million and thirteen thousand seven hundred and ninety so what will go into the trust is a hundred and three million dollars now um, the the vote will take place uh, for those who are 18 or, or over as uh, was discussed earlier actually um, and to be clear in this case the voters are not the citizens under your citizenship code, but the members who are anyone who's registered or entitled to be registered under the Indian Act and who's affiliated with your First Nation. So Canada is going to pay the $103 million plus a little bit more for ratification costs within 45 days of the effective date, which is when the minister will sign and after the ratification vote. But let's be clear that it's not going to be 45 days after October 26. There's a process that has to be gone through before the money can flow into the trust, and I'll get into that in a later slide. So um, is land included in this settlement agreement? No, it's not. Um, Canada did not offer any land. It actually has no land to offer. Um, and Ontario, in your particular case, declined to negotiate this particular specific claim and that means and I'll say this again but I'll say it now so it's clear you're not settling with Ontario with respect to this claim at all this is only with Canada and you are still entitled to go after Ontario after this process is done to seek land and or money from Ontario because Ontario was also part of the process of not getting you the, the reserve land that you should have received. So part of the settlement agreement is to you have to release and your relinquish your rights to the claim lands that green area forming part of the reserve. So what does that mean? It means that if you ratify this settlement agreement and the trust agreement at the same time, uh, you cannot come back to Canada with any more claims and say, look, we should have received that green block of land, we should have received that 101.4 square miles or 64,846 acres, should have been part of our reserve and we want to go back and we want that as part of our reserve or we want that whole land as our reserve. You can't make that claim again. You will give up your rights and interests that you as a First Nation and the members, both the past members, those who have passed away, the present members and the future members have that the claim lands should have formed part of your reserve. That does not mean, very clearly, it does not mean that you're giving up your treaty rights to hunt, trap and fish on that area. You can go after the ratification vote if it's successful or if it's not successful you can continue to exercise your treaty rights not only on the, that block of land, but in, in fact throughout your entire Robinson-Huron Treaty territory. It's a very limited thing that you're dealing with. You're settling a claim that you should have gotten the reserve in 1851 that you had bargained for, but did not get. So I want to be very clear about that. You're not giving up any treaty rights to hunt, trap, fish, or whatever on any of this land. Um, now, what happens if you don't approve it? Um, the settlement agreement and the trust agreement will be null and void. They will have no effect. The whole thing will have come to an end if you do, if you do not approve it. Next slide. So, um, as I said earlier, you're not getting any land in this settlement agreement, but you are getting a right to make applications to Canada to have about 65,000 acres set apart as reserve land from within the selection area. The selection area is that yellow area over there. That's the land that is your traditional territory that uh, Vidal Anderson recognized in uh, actually before 1850. And so the chief and council said, look, if we want to apply to add lands to our reserve under this settlement agreement, let's take that area of land and 
try to find land within that area. It says up to 64,896 uh, acres. It doesn't mean you have to get to that number. Uh, what you do with your money, what land you can get with that money, plus what land and money you can get from Ontario um, is to be determined, but you can add up to 64,896 acres. So if you're going to do this in the future, you're going to have to follow all the laws and regulations that apply for uh, ATRs, additions to reserve. And as with all additions to reserve, the Minister of uh, Indigenous Services, actually, I think it's the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations now, um, will decide whether or not you can uh, add to the reserve. But essentially what this agreement gives you is the right within that area to apply for up to about 65,000 acres of additional land to add to your reserve. And you'll either have to pay for that land or you'll have to get it from the Crown and Right of Ontario. So that map, I already explained that map. Um, part of the settlement amount that you received um, included land acquisition costs and you will, out of the $103 million that you get, some of that land, some of that money can be used to, um, to buy land and you will need to pay for yourself the acquisition costs for getting that land as though you were a private landowner, so you would have to pay for any surveys that might need to be done, uh, land title res registration, legal fees, um, anything that you might have to pay to a municipality uh, in order to add land to the reserve. Sometimes those are, uh, those are arrangements that are reached to do an ATR. And any capital infrastructure costs that you want to uh, incur in order to provide services, that'll, come, that'll be your cost. Okay, so the next slide. Um, why did Canada do this? Uh, they did this because they wanted to uh, settle your claim, but in order to settle your claim, they want something in return. They give you the money, you give them something in return. The two things that you're giving them in return are the release and the indemnity. So what is the release? It's a, an agreement for you as a First Nation to forever not go back against Canada to either assert claims or sue claims uh, about the quantum and location of reserve lands that you should have got in 1851. Um, it also means you can't go back after them for uh, negotiation costs or more money for negotiation costs and loans for pursuing this claim. <laughs> You're accepting the adequacy of the approximately $104 million to settle this claim. You are releasing Canada from any claims about how the money is used. You've decided to put the money into a trust. The trust will manage, the trustees will manage that money. And if there was any problems with that, Canada's not on the hook for that. Canada is also not on the hook if there is any misuse of the trust monies uh, by the trustees, which again almost never happens, but Canada is saying you can't come back after us. We're giving you the money and that's it. So the next thing, I have the little uh, picture of suspenders there because Canada typically asks for two things in exchange for settling a claim. One is the release, meaning that you agree not to sue them, and the other thing is that they say you have to hold us harmless in case you do sue us. So if you were to come after them, or not you, but uh, other people in the future from future members were to come, or even current members were to come and sue Canada again, Canada has in this agreement an indemnity from you that says you will have to pay them back. So it really does you no good to bring another claim because the First Nation will have to pay it all back. There's a process uh, in place if that ever were to happen. Um, Canada would have to notify the First Nation if it were sued and the First Nation could participate in that. But Canada will have the final say on settling disputes and fit the First Nation would have 90 days to decide whether to participate or Canada can go ahead without you. And as I said earlier, just the last point, the release and indemnity are Canada's protection that you won't come after them for more money for this particular claim. Also, just to let you know that um, what we have been told by Canada's lawyers, there has never been for this kind of a specific claim settlement any claims that have ever been made against the first.